All right, so with a little bit of waiting and a little bit of luck and a lot of saving, I've managed to purchase an Altair clone, which is currently in the mail. Now, um, it does have a lot of emulation built in, so discs and all that, but, well, I have a teletype machine already, and it's one of the reasons why I bought, bought this Altair clone in the first place. And I want to punch off a couple paper tapes, even though this is possibly one of the slowest ways next to the front panel that you can input data into it. I've already gone and I've punched off a couple of tapes, and those are over here. And these really aren't anything that special, it's just basic, they're just programs written in basic. Uh, this one here is an 8K program called Weather, and it's just basically predicting your weather based on two days of previous weather. We have classic tic-tac-toe on 4K, and what was this one again? Oh yes, we have Lunar Lander on 4K as well, and these are really these are standard ASCII uh, text files, which you can find in play around places online. And you can just uh, send these to the teletype machine, and it really doesn't matter how you send it to them. Um, it'll just punch them out, no problem. Now, I want BASIC, because you can't really do a whole hell of a lot with the Altair without BASIC. And eventually I will be converting my Altair clone into an S100 machine, because it has a lot of space in it. So. Um, I don't have a disk drive. I won't be able to afford a disk drive. I need some options here. And so what the hell? So let's grab a copy of Microsoft Basic. Now there's two versions. There's 4K and there's the 8K. And I guess just for now I'm going to have the 4K. But the problem is, is that unlike our rolls of paper tape over here f with Basic games on them, um, Basic itself uses a lot of special characters. And for a teletype machine, um, that's a bit of extra work. Now, if you have a high-speed paper tape punch and reader, this isn't a problem for you because you don't have a printing mechanism. However, in a teletype, oops, the printing mechanism is directly linked to the punch, unless you have some strange, obscure, unobtainium option which disables the print head when you're punching. And, well, like I said on obtainium, I don't have it. So, a number of things have to be prepared before you do this. And it's not recommended you do this on a regular basis with a Model 33 at all. Uh, first off, um, it's going to be feeding you a lot of line feeds and uh, form feeds and a bunch of stuff like that. I recommend get two sheets of paper, uh, especially in my case here where I'm using 7.5 by 11 inch paper, which is expensive, and uh, splice it together. Just have it so it's a continuous roll that goes around and around and around and around and around and around and around. That's a terrible splice here, by the way, but... I just need it for one purpose. Anyways, um, that'll save you on paper. Second thing, make sure your teletype is oiled up and all ready to go. It's going to be exercising every single function on here. Every key press, here is, the bell, the reader, all that. Also, no tapes in the reader when you do this. Otherwise, it's going to start that off and just a whole bunch of other problems you don't need. And make sure you have enough paper tape. There's a, you need at least 50 feet for when you're doing um, 4K basic. And there's still enough on here. And oh, by the way, uh, make sure that everything's all set up when you punch and all your settings are correct. Otherwise, you might end up with a massive pile of screwed up tape that's absolutely useless for what you want. Anyways, once the teletype is all set up, you need to have your, act, your image of basic. And in my case, why is this so, hold on a second here. Oh, that's why. Um, I already have um, 4K and 8K basic, and you can get it from certain places, which, to please the people that be, um, I won't say. Um, okay, but uh, you need to configure your serial port properly. Now, that doesn't mean go into control panel and set all that. Um, okay, key thing here. When you print, 110 baud, um, 8 bits, no parity, two stop bits. If you do anything else, as I discovered with those screwed up pieces, um, you'll find out that your punch tape, this is our original image here, and this is the tape I punched the first time around. As you can see, they don't match up. And that's simply because of my parity and my um, bit width being wrong. I did this with um, even bits and, uh, or even parity and seven bits. And this is with eight bit. And I ran a test earlier just to verify it. 
and it came out a lot better. Again, this is my image. This is my punch tape. And that's the checksum, I believe, right there in the middle. And they're all perfectly matched up. So yeah, do maybe like a meter or two of test tape before you do a tape this long. Just to check, check, and double check that it's all set. And then I'm gonna use a, use a simple little program here called uh, TerraTerm. And all you have to do in there is once you install it, is set up the serial port. And yeah, there's the settings right there. You don't really need to worry about flow control all that much. I turn X on, X off, um, on simply because the teletype supports it, but we're not gonna need it in this case. But yeah, 110, eight, and two, and that's all set. Make sure you know where, your fi where the file is you're gonna do. And let's go back over to teletype here for a second. I'm gonna switch the line. I have a custom option in there, so it does seem a little bit um, weird to turn it on. Um, tape's all set up. Page is in. Carriage is in the home. We will turn on the punch. We will head back over to the computer. And back in TerraTerm, file, send file. Make sure binary is set. Select your file, so we're going to do the 4K basic, and it's as simple as sending it. Now, this is going to take a while to send, so I'm not going to play through the record through the entire time it does this, but uh, yeah, I'll get back to you once we're done here. Here comes the end of the tape now. It's going to be a fairly long uh, leader here. Put the stack of tape down to the floor. Oh, hello, foot. Okay, there. So, um, I've screwed this up several times, but the way I verify this is to simply um, take it out of the punch and read it back into the computer. Okay, so I've spanned the tape out, and yes, it does go basically to the other side of the house, save maybe about five or six feet. And it now runs into the reader. And what we're going to do is we're going to read it back just to verify with the original tape image that I have that it's valid and it will work. Now that I'm aware of, there is no loader on this, so you'll have to manually toggle that into your Altair when you get it. But anyways, we go over to the computer. And I don't use... Hey, what's going on here? Oh, shoot. Forgot about that again. Yes, I don't use TerraTerm for logging. So we'll close that. I use RealTerm, 
but really you can use just about any terminal emulation program which will um, operate at uh, where is it? And two that will uh, log to a text capture to a text file. So basically desktop save. And since we're all set up here, I can start, go here, and because I had X on, X off set, I don't have to um, start the reader myself. I just do control Q. Oops. Did I set something here right? All right. Sorry. There you go. Make sure you apply your settings before you do this. And use for caption, control Q, control Q. There we go. And it's just gonna go off and read there and I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I'll make this kind of quick here because I'm about to run out of battery life on this camera here. Uh, one we just inputted. Original file, original file, one we just inputted here. They're both absolutely identical, but the one we just inputted is four bytes smaller than the original. And I was confused on what the hell that was. And it turns out, um, because the tape reader cut off before the very end of the tape, there's four bytes missing. So if I were to add those extra four bytes onto here, the files would otherwise be identical. And in theory, once the Altair comes in, I'll be able to uh, do my loader and it will come into 4K Basic and we'll be all ready to go. But uh, yeah, there you have it.